Andy. off at Front Street. Yep. Exit 9. Half a mile. In half a mile, take exit 9 for Ohio 65 Front Street. Turn right onto Riverside Drive. Take the next right onto Riverside Drive, then your destination will be on the right. Check that out, that's pretty cool. Oh, big boats. Look at how it looks when it's frozen. It's... Wow. Lights hit the network industry. Lake Superior. The native fish is white fish, yellow perch. On James Shoemaker Bell. He built ships, apparently. Sixty four foot wide shoemaker, along with her bell, remained the lake's widest ship until 1927. There was two inflatable life rafts that was recovered from the wreck of Fitzgerald. And then the lifeboat oars. These oars were one of the one of the two steel lifeboats that were recovered from the surface of Lake Superior after the loss of the Fitzgerald. So see they found some of it. And those are the two life rafts. Wow, that's pretty cool. Here's some pictures that were taken on the Fitzgerald. Thousands meet their end. The Great Lakes can be a dangerous place to work and travel. Storms, reefs, and explosions, as well as collisions due to 
over crowded shipping lanes and a lack of navigation and communication technologies had brought over 8,000 boats and thousands of lives to a watery end since 1679. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's dry compass and the sextant was used in navigation to measure the angle between an object in the sky and the horizon. Wow. And then you know a dry compass is a basic tool of navigation that identifies friction against magnetic north. Check the radar to see if other ships are in the area. <laughs> are there ships in the area? <laughs> There's one of them, looks like. <laughs> Marine projector, 1940. Oh, Polaris, 1900. It's a Polaris. And this is the gyro compass. Peter. Oh, Taurus. And this is the gyro compass and of Peter from 1925. Joseph Wood. This set is considered one of the oldest in existence. First life saving equipment was made by Captain John Ross Ward in 1854 for British lifeboat crews. Wow. For centuries, the bounty of the lakes drew me. Oh, yeah, that's pretty cool. 1854 was the first for British lifeboat crews. The European explorers braved the unknown to forge a lifeline of trade and transport. In their wake came entrepreneurs, inventors, builders, and dreamers who flooded into the new frontier. Okay, so finding survivors. This was where immigrants could find the American dream. They used the flare gun in 1930s. Oil lamp was in the 1900s. That was used to distress to communicate using the Morse code. This is the flare gun. And this was the emergency position indicating radio beacon. This was a beacon. And this was a 2000 beacon. Oh, those are two of them. Two new beacons. 
so it went from the gun all the way to the beacons. Two, when two storms collide. Total loss of crew, stranded boat, <sighs> southern low pressure, Arctic high pressure, <laughs> stormy. <laughs> Okay, so I just finished my tour. So cool though. This is really cool. This is about the shoemaker. It was launched in 1911. It's six. 617 feet and she's 64 feet wide and she sailed the lakes for nearly 70 years the last 11 were of them were as Willis B. Boyer the shoemaker was saved from scrapping through a 25 year campaign to raise the funds needed to restore her as a museum ship Seasonal admission to the shoemakers included in your ticket to the National Museum of the Great Lakes. Uh, so, I'll have to come back here the next year to be able to go on that. That would be really cool. Oh, so that's the shoemaker. So that's the six. That's the same boat. Yeah, that's the same six hundred and. 600 and how many feet? 617 feet long. So yeah, that's the same boat. Wow. That's how long it is. That's the same boat, Tina. the anchors Radio and direction finder. <clears throat> Gift of Helen H. and Gregory Emmett. It's a radio beacon system for the Great Lakes. This Memorials of a kid to all who served aboard submarines. Mm -hmm, that's cool. Uh, the U.S. Toledo, USS Toledo, with a nuclear power attack submarine and a third vessel to be named for the city of Toledo. Oh. Oh. So it has a complement of 12 officers and 90 enlisted sailors. Wow, look at that. That's pretty cool. America's submarines of the Great Lakes. 
So during World War II, 28 diesel electric submarines were constructed for the United States Navy by the Manawak Shipbuilding Company in Wisconsin. 25 of the boats were completed in time to see combat action in World War II. Four of the boats were lost at sea and remain on internal patrol. Wow. How did I get so crazy about boats? <laughs> I don't know. Powerful sort of force. A unique on the planet, the Great Lakes have a rich history that began over 10,000 years ago when retreating glaciers carved and then filled basins to form these inland seas. Since then, they have been a powerful force both geologically and historically. The lakes are alive with floral and fauna. The abundance of natural resources shape the destinies of the United States and Canada. They have been the site of tremendous battles and deadly disasters that never fail to fascinate and frighten. Come inside the museum to discover all that is great about the Great Lakes. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Oh, look at that. That looks really cool. That's the end of it. That's the back of it. <laughs> hey, <laughs> watch this crap. I have the tiniest ears ever. Okay, so it has to go in that way. Uh. I want it to stay out of my ears. Okay. I go like, did I get? Alright, I stepped over here before I got on the freeway. This is Tribute Park. And it's dedicated to the bridge. And it's supposed to, I guess it's one statue, it's supposed to be pretty cool. <sighs> Yeah. Northwest Ohio Building Trades. Uh, looks pretty cool. All these different flags. I just wanted to go for a walk somewhere and I said this was the park, nearest park. And there's a statue. Carpenters local. <sighs> Tribute Memorial. By Evan Lewis. Yeah, Evan Lewis. Tribute Memorial. <laughs> Evan Lewis. Workers Northwest Ohio. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Hey. Huh.